All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. This is a big deal because um, we have both of you here, and you all are the, 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 the legacy of one of the biggest brands in our community, one of the most important organizations in our community, First Premier. We have Tony Knorr and Dave Roseboom of First Premier Bank and Premier Bank Card. We appreciate you guys so much for coming. Yeah, well, thanks for having us, Vani, and thanks for everything that you and the Think 3D team do to, to uh, move our community forward in the leadership space and in educating um, not only employees, but the community at large. We appreciate uh, uh, what you do and, and uh, are big fans of yours. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming. This is a big deal. So we have the president of First Premier Bank and we have the VP of uh, Relationship Banking. Yes. Yes. I know you guys got big titles. On. <laughs> There's a lot of words in your titles. Tell us what that means. Tell us what it means to be um, the, the the president of a, of a bank like that and the, the VP of Relationship Banking. Yeah, well, Banking. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and start. So um, with the growth of our organization, we've been fortunate. Denny has owned... Uh, uh, premier since uh, 1986. We've continued to grow, and that's provided opportunities for uh, for many of us. Um, Dave and I both joined joined the organization about 10 years ago, and uh, my role today is leading the teams that really take care of our customers. Uh, that's that core um, community bank business lines, um, everything from our branch network to uh, wealth management, uh, business banking. And uh, have the opportunity to uh, to lead those teams, and, and it's been a a great ride. Um, mm -hmm. We've been fortunate in this community with the growth uh, of our community. We've been able to, to uh, be a beneficiary of that. Um, so really enjoyed uh, the opportunities that Denny and uh, um, our CEO Dana and, and others have uh, um, provided to us. And uh, speak only for myself, but I think if you talk to a lot of the, the premier. Uh, team members, uh, they're also grateful for that that opportunity we've been given. Absolutely. Tell us about this day, because when we th when we talk about growth, I don't want to soft play this, right? We're talking about going from millions to billions, from dozens to thousands. Like, what, you know, what does it take to keep this thing going and build this thing? How do you fit in all of that? Well, again, thank you, Vani, for having us. Uh, uh, I think we do it the old-fashioned way. We do it one customer at a time. And I think that's one of the really unique aspects of the Premier story. Um, when Denny acquired the organization back in 1986, we were 150 million in assets. And, and it seems like a lot, but in bank standards, that's a pretty small organization. Yeah. And today, just on the bank side alone, we uh, topped over 3 billion in assets. And, and so it doesn't just happen, you know, and that's over now a 25, about a 35 year period of time. Uh, but we haven't done a single acquisition. So everything has been organic growth and uh, just a hats off to our team for making that happen. That's big. And um, let's talk about that a little bit um, as we talk about team, because the team has evolved and grown quite a bit. And, um, you know, we do some work with you all and, uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit because we love what, so much of what you all do. But one of the things as a common denominator for a lot of the folks that are in this organization is an amazing amount of tenure. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're in some rooms where we're in there with, you know, there's 20 people and there's 300 years of tenure in there. You know what I mean? Like, what is that? Like, how how, how do you build something that has people so committed to it and staying in that um, space for so long? The One of the things that Denny, when Dana Dykhouse was hired as our CEO back in uh, 1995, uh, so 26 years ago, one thing Denny impressed upon him was just the fact that he wanted to um, have Dana uh, work with him to design an organization, to build an organization that people were proud to work for. Mm. And uh, I think that if you look backwards, uh, that's been one of the key ingredients of the success, just having a, a tremendous culture, a people-focused culture uh, that really honored the work of the individual contributor to our organization, the importance of each of our managers that might lead a group of 10 people, mm -hmm. um, and knew that if we could develop them and pour into them, um, that that would be the only way we could sustain success over the long term. Yeah. Boy, is that the truth. I mean, in, in, you know, you both kind of came in at similar points of time, 
Um, but you know, you were in the banking world beforehand, and then you come into this new culture. It, it it's a smaller institution than what you came from uh, for both of you. So what what it, what was it like coming into that culture, and how has it developed over the time that you've been there? Yeah, um, it was a, uh, a positive um, experience initially. Uh, coming from a larger national organization uh, to a smaller community um, bank where we all knew each other. Um, That was a a real positive when you're, as Dave said, growing one customer at a time uh, to know what your um, bandwidth allows and what you need to do to to solve that customer's Mm -hmm. problem is is really probably around that table or a quick um, walk down the hall. Uh, I think puts our team in a position um, to feel empowered, uh, to be successful in, uh, and have that rewarding experience of of being able to to bring on their neighbors um, as as new customers or that business down the street that just opened uh, and to be able to solve those problems um, around a table in person. um, There's a lot of, lot of value in that. I think for, for a lot of our folks, uh, that's why they've, they've stayed. Um, because they they've seen the growth, uh, and they still believe, as we do, that our best days are mm-hmm. are yet to come. Um, and and uh, had a conversation yesterday with uh, one of our branch managers. Uh, she just celebrated her 40th anniversary uh, wow. on August 1st, and uh, just having her reminisce about what she's seen and in, in the um, the growth and development of our organization, what she's meant to others. Um, it's it's fun to see the, the mentorship that happens organically. Uh, that, that folks that have been there uh, maybe a, a couple of weeks or a month look to those folks to say, all right, help me, uh, help me along the way. And, and we've been fortunate to, um, and it hasn't by, not by accident, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but through intentional focus on our people and mm-hmm. leaders growing leaders uh, to, uh, to have those managers that are managing maybe 10, 10 individuals or less um, that really own, whether it's their branch or their business, uh, and, and feel like an entrepreneur within within a, a banking organization. That's tough to do because it's, it's highly regulatory, right? So this is a very regulated business. And so that generally runs contrary to empowerment and innovation and, and doing interesting and dynamic things. But you guys have kept moving, right? You're, you're evolving in terms of the, 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 the systems that you use and the processes that you have to even – um, that new building that you have that is that is such a beautiful thing to see as somebody who's who's had an opportunity to see this organization grow in our community. How do you allow for that innovation, that change, that empowerment, that entrepreneurial spirit um, in the midst of such a heavily regulated environment? Well, Vani, we, we are in a regulated business, and that certainly comes with uh, significant parameters around what we can do and how we do it. And... Um, but yeah, within that, the, the nice thing about the banking system in the United States is there's no one bank uh, that looks like another bank. Mm. You know, uh, we offer similar products and services, but the way we deliver it, the areas we focus on, uh, we have a lot of latitude in making those decisions. And um, again, it, the, the key is, is that if you hire the right people, if you develop them, you give them space to grow mm. um, within the context of the parameters we need to deal with, because right. that's just a reality of our business. And, um, uh, but yet again, enough latitude is within that to give opportunities for people to flourish. Yeah. And I think the other thing that I'll just say distinctively about our organization is there's a big advantage in being privately owned. Mm. Um, we have the luxury of time. We don't have to do anything today. We can make sure we're doing the right thing at the right time in the right way. Mm-hmm. And we don't have uh, schedules or, uh, you know, quarterly uh, uh, earnings reports that come at us uh, yeah. really quickly and kind of force you into making some difficult decisions. But why not? I mean, like, if you guys went private, a good handful of you guys can cash out and <laughs> be looking real good. Why not? Why still manage privately? You could be huge if you wanted to. Why the one customer at a time thing? Why staying um, staying accessible. Yeah. Why, why is that so important? 
Well, I think the uh, the unique thing about our organization is in many ways we're a local organization, but we're also a regional organization, and in many ways we're a national organization. Our sister company, Premier Bank Card, uh, mm -hmm. has card holders in all 50 states. Uh, within the bank, we have certain segments of our organization, like our Treasury Services uh, Department, which happens to be the mm -hmm. 13th largest ACH originator in the entire United States, uh, uh, again, has customers in all 50 states. And so we are not restricted geographically to mm -hmm. grow. We have the opportunity to be here, to have our employees located here, but to, to be entrepreneurially enough to be mm -hmm. able to expand our horizons in the businesses where it makes sense on a national scale. Yeah. So so we made you helped us understand why people who may, may have been there for 20, 40 years, but there's a lot of reasons why people might have done that. What's the case for someone engaging in the organization now because workforce is a huge thing which is why culture is becoming so prominent for people right now you know it's a, it's a hot button thing we know when we got started you know it was hippy dippy mumbo jumbo to talk about culture for a lot of people but you guys were on that train earlier so what's the case for a young person to start their career with the first premiere why would they want to do that right now i'd say we work really hard to be an attractive employer um, we survey our existing employees, find out where we're, we're hitting the mark and maybe where we're, uh, where we have a, a room for opportunity. And, and, uh, part of our mentality is continuous improvement. Uh, where, where can we get better, uh, for that person that's just graduating school? Um, the opportunity with us is, is not only a rewarding career in financial services, um, but also, uh, hopefully a rewarding life in terms of being involved in the community. Um, we, whether it's our, our time, talents, or resources, are, are very involved in um, in organizations throughout, and we really encourage that of our our team members. And I, I think a lot of um, a lot of the next generation, current generations, want to be part of that fabric of their community and feel like they're making an impact. Um, and to be part of an organization that is is really working hard and we set the bar high and we're going to set it higher next year um, that had been fortunate to have some success but knowing that that denny's going to reinvest our leadership is going to reinvest those dollars here and for our team to see that to know that they're they're an important part of that mm -hmm. um feel is is, is rewarding uh, for someone that wants more than just uh, we often talk about um, if you're just trading your time for for our money Go find something else to do. If you want to be part of something um, more than than that, then then look at us. Well, we we have uh, we have opportunities, and, and hopefully, um, we're providing opportunities for folks to grow internally. Uh, so regardless of where you come into our organization, that that doesn't mean that that's where um, where you're going to end up. I don't know if you have well, and, and that, Dave, Dave, you 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 do a lot with. The education piece of it, uh, Premier University and those type of things, which is something we've gotten to participate in and, and really been excited by, is the idea of really setting in and committing to developing leaders, to really reaching in the organization and finding folks and helping them develop that skill set for them to be successful. Like, there's, there, there's a definite use case for people to invest some into it, but not to the degree that you all do. That goes beyond what you need to make the business run. You guys are already successful. Why such a commitment, and how does that play into attracting young talent to the organization? So I think we're, we have a, an intense focus on the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we take a step back and rest on our laurels and let ourselves get stagnant. I think we're always challenging ourselves. How can we do it better? How can we do, be more efficient? How can we be more effective? And uh, the thing we'll share with every one of our employees is that uh, uh, they're the ones that make it happen. Yeah. And so recognizing that uh, it's critical, the role we play, that I play, yeah. is to make sure they have the tools to be successful. Mm. Part of the tool set to be successful is education and us investing in their personal growth uh, that they can use in their family or in their community or in their church or school, but also their professional growth, yeah. uh, which they can use in their career. And um, some employees that we'll have, some of our interns may be with us just for a summer. Yeah. Some of our employees, uh, I can think of one that we celebrated our 55th anniversary with. Wow. Premier. And so whether you have a three-month experience with us or you have a 50-year experience with us, we want you to look back and to say, you know, that was a good experience. 
I learned something and hopefully I contributed to their success. Yeah. And I think that mindset really uh, has helped us be successful. We had an opportunity to uh, hang out with some of you all at a retreat that you all put together for some of your emerging leaders. And through just the amazing space we were in and the people we were around, seeing uh, Dana at 7 o'clock in the morning making breakfast for people, seeing people come around and talk about where they came from, their childhoods, their lives, their homes, their families, their dreams, their aspirations, why we want to engage with each other, why you want to um, be prominent in the community. And the one thing is just so clear, it's like, this is not normal. Right? It should be, but this is not normal. It was just not a normal thing to see that kind of engagement and focus on the human being. And speak to that a little bit because it, because it is atypical. And I don't know that most people would believe it if they just heard it. So what is that about? What is what is that piece, the dealing with the, 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 the human, the person? Well, I believe that um, being authentic, being genuine, being um, an organization that honors and respects the individual contributor to our organization is fundamental to our success. And so, again, I started out saying that at the end of the day, uh, we're going to be successful. Uh, uh, and, and if we are, it's going to be dependent on each of our individual contributors and each of our managers that might lead a group of 10 people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you really believe that's the case, and it is, uh, then you really can't pour into them enough. Yeah. And you can't show that you care enough and that you're alongside them enough. Uh, it's absolutely critical. And if you do that in a way that is authentic, um, then you have a chance to be successful over time. If you pay lip service to it, if you say one thing and then do another, um, that will not stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing I'd add to that, um, and, and Dave referenced it, we have folks that come for a summer. We have. Um, folks that spend their entire working career with us. Uh, but we also have folks that come from a, a farming background or from um, a metro community with all kinds of life experiences. And uh, what Denny, Dana, and Miles um, knew early on is that we needed to have a common language within our organization. Mm -hmm. And to Dave's point, we couldn't just put it on the wall and say, well, that's, that's our views and values. We needed to live it. Um, and that's where I believe that we've had, had some, had success is our leaders, um, and those leaders, growing leaders that, uh, that, that walk that walk in mm. terms of our views and values and really worked hard, um, to make that an integral part of every meeting, every, every opportunity so that folks, uh, regardless of if they immigrated to this country as a first generation American, or they're the fifth generation on their homestead, uh, regardless of their background, they came and, and, and said, all right, we can get on board with this. Um, and those things speak about the importance of employees being proactive, mm. uh, taking responsibility, um, and getting folks, um, to Dave's point, to, to, to buy in or to, to just see that, hey, there's an opportunity here. If I, if I apply myself and I um, do the best to, to learn and grow, that, that doors are going to open for me. Um, I think that has been a hallmark for us in terms of our views mm -hmm. and values and, and, and recognizing those that, uh, that live up to those. But, or and, the thing that I, I, I appreciate the most about your organization is that you're winning and you are trying to get better. That, I think, is the, the, the thing that when people watch this and we talk about bring executives and people who have been successful um, in to talk and so that young people can, or anyone can listen to you all and hear about, you know, the methodologies and the philosophies behind what you do. I think the one thing that we always want people to take away is just that no matter where you are on that journey, there's an opportunity for you to get better. And you all have a real commitment to that, which is part of the role we play with you. Again, why? You know what I mean? Like you're winning. <laughs> you know, what I mean? when you look at the balance sheet, it's just profit, hockey stick growth. Everything's going up, new building, da 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 da, da all this other type of stuff. And 
you're like, how could we refresh this and make this better? Like, what would make a person <laughs> in the midst of all you're doing go through all of that work to do that? What drives that? Well, I think it's just a, a good fundamental understanding that nothing stays the same. Hmm. Um, business always changes, the economy always changes, uh, society always changes. And uh, we can all point to lots of examples of companies that got stuck in time. Mm -hmm. And um, we intend to be around for a long time. And so if we intend to be, if our time horizon is long, then you recognize that there's things you need to do today that will position you for three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. And um, in some of those ways, we've got to be willing to change, to adapt. Uh, that's not easy for uh, people who have led an organization. You know, I think Dana and Miles uh, would tell you, I'd probably tell you the same thing, that uh, sometimes you have to let go of some things that really made you successful. Mm. Uh, but you need to uh, refresh them. You need to take a, a fresh look at them. You need to welcome ideas from people who are coming in from the outside. Mm. Um, and so I think we've just been able to, to hold on to things that are, that are kind of non-negotiable but yet be willing to change and adapt and evolve in a way that um, can help us be successful th for the long pole. And every time we have a new employee orientation and get to do those, and there's nothing that I enjoy more than that, uh, I, I say that you, you may have heard about Premier, you probably don't know much about it. Um, and you know that we've been successful, but that's not why you joined us. Mm -hmm. You joined us because of the opportunities that you will have to expand your horizons, to grow in your career, to contribute to our future success. Yeah. And uh, I think it's always being mindful that each employee has their own story. They join us for their own reasons, uh, but it's uh, critical that they know that we're gonna provide them opportunities to be successful. Yeah. So let's get into some lessons. Let's get into a few things that could really, you know, um, let me ask you the different one. What would the 20 year old versions of yourselves say about where you're at now? What would the 20 year old versions about yourselves say about where you're at now? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know how colorful the language is. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, fair. Um, I didn't know exactly at 20 what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. but I, I think all of us want to feel like we're making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it might be a little cliche, but we want to feel like we're adding value wherever we're at, whatever group we're part of. Um, and uh, I knew that at 20, know that at, at, uh, at 41, and feel like with, with Premier, I've had that opportunity and I'm grateful for that. Um, so I, I think maybe my 20 year old self might be a little little surprised at, at some things in terms of having four kids and and uh, uh, kind of the the pace that uh, we sometimes run. But um, it's been a it's been a good journey, and I I'll just share, Vani, I, my dad immigrated to this country. Um, shared that before, and uh, we want for our kids what what they wanted for us, and that was a, a better um, a better life and, and just an opportunity to to. Uh, um, to pursue, um, whether it be a career or a spouse or or a family, and uh, I think if you ask my dad, who still lives here today, um, he's he would he would be proud of that, and that that uh, uh, that makes me proud to know that um, he was in a better spot than his his parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, looking ahead to the next generation, we want we want to set this community and in this region up um, to. Uh, to be even a better spot for, for the next generation. Absolutely. Uh, for me, Vani, I grew up on a, on a corn and soybean and hog farm in central Iowa at 20 years old. I, you know, if you'd have said that we'd be sitting around this t table having a podcast today, um, uh, <laughs> could not have envisioned that. But I, I think maybe a piece of advice to people as they are 20 is that you don't have to map it all out at that age. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you need to control what you can control. You need to take personal responsibility. You need to invest in yourself. Uh, you need to align yourself with people, with friends, with family, with uh, employers that are consistent with, you know, how you like to operate. Um, but you don't have to have it all figured out. 
Mm. And uh, there's time to let that cha- that next chapter be written. Uh, you don't have to write them all when you're 20, thank goodness. Because <laughs> I think we'd probably limit ourselves way more than we ever should. For sure. Yeah, Absolutely. and that's good advice. And the other the other uh, piece to that, too, because not many of us know at 20 what we, wanted, what we want to do when we – and some do, uh, but we often – tell our, our team members that are just joining us or that are looking for that next step in their career. I think we're all, um, that's something we, we all do, but um, a mentor of mine shared, be the best at whatever that role is that you, you are, whatever opportunity is in front of you, be the best teller, be the best personal banker and doors will open. Mm. Um, I think that was good advice that I got at a young age to just be excellent yeah. You don't know what doors are going to open. Um, you you, uh, you pray for discernment as when those doors open, uh, if that's when you want to walk through. But doors will start to open, and, and uh, uh, I think that's been um, my experience in in uh, the journey over the last 20 years. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you got to start over from scratch. And we're going to blank your memory, but you get to keep one lesson to start over with. What would that lesson be? I didn't prep them for these. These are sneak attacks. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you want to take this Always one have first? a sneak attack. Yeah. <laughs> Always have a sneak attack. One lesson. Um, you know, I think the uh, a, a, a lesson, not perhaps the only one or the best one, but. Um, yeah, just understand that we all have a role to play, uh, and every role is important. No, no role is more important than another role. My role at the bank is um, has a set of responsibilities that go with that, but we are just as every bit dependent on every role we have in the organization for mm-hmm. us to be successful. So, you know, play the role that you're assigned mm-hmm. and master it to Tony's point, um, and uh, together we can be successful. You think of all the parts of the body. Mm-hmm. None of them can play a, a, a role that the other part plays. Yeah. But we need every one of them. Yeah. And so I just think that's uh, something I've taken away. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another piece to that that I believe has made us successful, and and, uh, and Dave and I have been able to hop on just 10 years ago on this, uh, this journey, um, just the the mutual respect that we need to to uh, treat our our fellow human, um, and have probably been a little uh, little leadership sad over the last uh, few years in in terms of some of the divisiveness and things. But uh, when we're within the walls of our organization, our community, treating others with the same dignity and respect mm-hmm. that that we would want to be treated. Um, I know it's the golden rule, the platinum rule, and it's often often said, but it can't be understated how important that is. And you see that um, shortly after I started, uh, Denny stopped down to my office to welcome me to the organization. Um, Dana is on a first name basis with just about everybody in our, uh, in our organization and treats, regardless of the role, uh, to Dave's point, um, with the same dignity and respect, mm-hmm. that, that human value. Um, we believe that whether it's leaders, developing leaders or um, encouraging folks to be their best. If you treat them um, with with high regard, uh, you're going to be surprised in, in a good way. And uh, we've been fortunate in that that regard. Absolutely. Before we get into some of the figure it out stuff, because that's a big thing. Uh, what's on the horizon? What do you guys got uh, going on? What are you cooking up? Well, I think our uh, our community is at a, at a wonderful point in its history. Um, you could look back to different points in time in Sioux Falls, and it's been a long run of growth and expansion and success. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just feel like uh, the changing demographics of our community provide us with such a unique opportunity. You know, Sioux Falls has grown through the years. We've grown, uh, uh, I often say, uh, from essentially a rural to an urban migration, and Sioux Falls has benefited mm-hmm. in that. And that's really uh, driven a lot of the growth over the last uh, 100 years. You look forward to the next 25 or 50 or 100 years for Sioux Falls, and that same type of growth isn't going to repeat itself. What's Mm. going to 
What's going to uh, evolve is that we are going to rely on people coming to us from other urban centers or, quite frankly, perhaps all across the world yeah. uh, to drive our population growth and, and those to fill the important roles that we uh, in jobs we have in our community. So I just think we're just uh, uh, the school district has been dealing with this uh, changing uh, demographic for uh, some time now. And now as business leaders, we're having the opportunity to do that. Yeah. And I'm just excited for the opportunity to embrace it and to uh, to run with it and create opportunities for, for people. That's such a big thing. I don't want to skip over that. Like you said, uh, opportunity. There's so many people out there that see those things as a problem, which is so con- concerning to me. But I love that you said it's an opportunity, that we get, we get a chance to um, cr- develop this organization to be able to um, be a good home for all of these folks, you know, for people to be able to thrive. I think that's just such an important thing. And not everybody will put it that way. And I think it's important that you did put it that way. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm I'm excited when I look at the future. Um, Dave mentioned, a, 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 I mean, we are, a, as a community, so well poised to yep. uh, and, and so well positioned uh, to take advantage of uh, the opportunities in front of us. We're no longer a secret. Um, I, I see us in a, a very good spot at Premier to continue to reach the next customer, to tell the Premier story. Um, and uh, we have a, a number of locations in, in outlying um, communities uh, that are being also very successful. Uh, so I, I just feel on a, so many fronts, we're in a, we're in a, in a position to execute. Um, Good is the uh, the enemy at great, but we, we need to continue to raise that bar and, and say how do we do that better? Yeah. How do we how do we put even better tools in our uh, employees' hands so that they can um, continue to grow and continue to elevate our organization? And uh, that's what what gets me excited and uh, um, the reason I'm optimistic for the future. Let's talk about that uh, really quick because you know. Um, the theme of Culture Con this year, and um, we appreciate your support in that and everything um, uh, that's been happening in the community that you all support, which is abundant. But we appreciate you engaging, especially for Culture Con, because it's such an opportunity for us to bring people together and and uh, to feel good around each other and, and to, to talk about how we can get better at culture, the activity of it, really do it. And I think it's so beautiful that we have a community where people are really coming together, figuring out how we make this thing great. But the theme of it this year is figure it out. And we went with figure it out because (laughs) we all had to figure a lot of stuff out. And so with all of the different things happening, um, just your general market forces, workforce, social unrest, a pandemic, all of these generational shifts, I mean, like, you know, in terms of a couple years, we've had a lot of things packed in. And, and even as we talk about Sioux Falls specifically, you know, floods, tornadoes, the, the, <laughs> the whole gambit. How did you all go about the business of figuring out? Because even through all of that stuff, you guys are coming out even better than what you went in. How did you go about the business of figuring it out? Well, it's a great question. Uh, you don't do it all at once. You figure it out incrementally. You uh, use the best information you have when you have it to make uh, good decisions. Um, and I just think back to the pandemic, just the aspect of it. I mean, we had, a, we had a health crisis going on in the country. And it was interesting as we as we were starting to learn more about that. Now, at the bank, we have to have a lot of contingency plans. That's just part of our regulated environment. We have to be prepared to deal with most any circumstances. But, you know, what you realize pretty soon is that anything you put on that pandemic plan um, a couple years ago, you know, um, it's a good thought exercise. But (laughs) (laughs) but the reality is, yeah, it's words on a piece of paper. And now you got stuff coming at you in real time. And I just think about uh, how um, uh, that we were mindful that our employees – and, and very early on, we were designated as an essential business. <coughs> Excuse me. So as an essential business, we had a responsibility to serve our customers. But we had to do it that our customers and more just as importantly, our employees could do it in a safe environment. Yeah. So we didn't have the option of just kind of saying, OK, we can just shut this down for a while. No, we're essential. We need to be there. We have to figure out how to do it in a safe and sound manner. And um, 
And then I soon, or we soon realized that, you know, we have a few people in leadership roles at the organization that people are looking to, but they look to us to make business decisions. They don't look to us to make health decisions. Right. And so to be credible with our employees, we better join forces with people that we know can speak to that in a credible way. And so I'm just thankful to our, 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 our friends over at Sanford Health in our, in our case. We worked with Dr. Alice Suttle since then, Dr. Jeremy Cowles, and, and they just provided us with rock solid advice. Okay. And um, so you, you need to take the emotion out of it. You need to take, in some cases, people had fear. Yeah. That's a powerful emotion. In other cases, people had apathy. Mm. And the reality was we, we wouldn't want to approach it with fear. and We wouldn't want to approach it with apathy. We needed to approach it um, logically yeah. and accurately. And so we just really relied uh, on their advice, their counsel, and they provided us really with a steady hand every step along the way. And in fact, we put them in front of our employees just to make sure that it wasn't just our words, but it mm -hmm. was the words of the professionals in our community to guide yeah. us. Yeah. What was your thought process on that? Because you relationship back, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's hard to maintain relationships, you know, through screens and, and all those other type of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, we get the advantage of hindsight now, um, but I felt from the beginning, while there was fear, there was apathy, this, I mean, there was thoughts on, well, this will be a few weeks and we'll be done, um, and everything in, everything in between, um, that we had the good fortune of strong leadership that had that steady hand internally. Uh, we relied on our partners externally to provide the health advice. Uh, we know how to run a bank, and with that health advice coming alongside, um, we're able to make some pragmatic decisions to realizing that we needed to still be there. Um, and we, we emphasize that significantly that um, we, we are the, we need to be there for, for business and for the economy to continue to run. Bankers across the country had to, had to be there. And, and we said, if we can do that and do it well, uh, we'll stand tall not only today, but, but once we get through this. And uh, really proud of the team uh, that that took that responsibility um, and not without disregard to the, the health aspect because we bought a lot of plexiglass we've moved people we uh, had folks work remotely when we when we could but uh, proud our leadership team stayed in the office um, just like our tellers did and, and those that that needed to be in our branches to turn the lights on and off and, and take care of our customers uh, but through that um, I felt we we actually got stronger um, mm -hmm. Folks were able to rally around a common, uh, whether it was the, the Paycheck Protection Program or uh, serving our, our customers through the drive-through when, when we temporarily had to, had to go appointment only. Uh, those things, um, just, just really proud. You talk about um, empowering the team while they were looking to us for direction. They were also helping us um, along the way with providing important clues as to, to what was working, what wasn't, uh, when we all had questions. Uh, we didn't know the answers. We shared what we knew, and we, we hopefully took advice in other areas where we, we didn't. Um, and uh, to now be 18 months in that, uh, through that, I uh, feel like we're, we're coming out of it stronger. Um, we'll be ready for unique situations moving forward and, and uh, better positioned. Uh, to be able to um, to react and adapt. Yeah, it's not the most ideal way to get experience, but it's a valuable experience <laughs> nonetheless. What are some personal lessons you all took from it? What are some things that you know, as as men, you grew in uh, in lessons from from this experience? I had, we all had a lot of time to reflect. We got mm -hmm. uh, in in some ways. Um, real challenging situations. In other ways, the pandemic was a, a gift in terms of the time we get to spend with our family and, and uh, reflect on uh, what's important to us. I'd say professionally, uh, just an opportunity to learn um, from, from folks like Dave, Dana, Miles, who, uh, uh, who helped steady the ship. And then also just a, a realization of how um, we only control certain things in this life. <laughs> and and uh, it, we, we often probably spend a lot too much time thinking about the things that we can't control versus what we can control. And, and uh, I've had a lot of opportunities to grow and in, in, uh, through that, just realizing um, 
so much of life is is how you react to what happens mm-hmm. versus um, we've all we've all heard that. But uh, uh, real gro- growth opportunity for um, for myself through through that experience. Mm-hmm. I think from my perspective, a couple things. First of all, just the importance of uh, communication. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, I, I'm always uh, struck by how people can can handle good news or bad news or or news that's in between. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's important that they hear from you and that you uh, that you're clear and concise and do a really effective job of communicating. Um, so it was just a good reminder of that. I think maybe the other thing that just appreciated is that everybody has their story in life. And, you know, we had some of our employees uh, who maybe were living at home alone. And so COVID, you know, they could kind of manage their circumstance there. But then you contrast that with uh, perhaps a, a husband and wife, one of which is employed by the organization. And they've got three kids at school. Um, and now the kids are at home and they've got one computer and one room to serve uh, father or mother and the three children. Yeah. And so just uh, having a recognition that uh, not all circumstances are the same and that you need to be empathetic and understanding of each individual circumstance. Uh, just again, a, g- a good reminder of that. Uh, but I, I'm like Tony. I'm just I'm just amazed at the resiliency of people to manage through, and at the end of the day, do it with a smile on their face and and know that they made a difference. Um, I don't think being a banker uh, has had its rewards for my whole 36 year career, but never was there a year that I felt like as a banker we made a bigger difference in the lives of our yeah. customers. Yeah. And um, and I and I just I'm I'm grateful that all of our team members had a chance to experience that firsthand for themselves. That's awesome. That was a big deal. Well, as we land the plane, let's talk about this, the community. You know, that's something that we all are really, really passionate about. <clears throat> and we get to work with you all in different capacities in the community. And it's the only thing that makes sense to me, which is if you're going to live in a place, to make it the best place possible, right? Because that's where you live. But that's not... That's not um, innate to everyone you know not everybody sees it that way and the significant amount of investment that the organization and you all as individuals put in the community is impressive but i think even more to the point beyond that is really the people power piece of it and really just the desire of supporting these things i mean you guys are a strong enough organization where you could just throw your oh, rookie move Rookie, we're keeping that in, by the way. Um, um, <laughs> but, you know, a lot of folks, you guys are big enough and, and powerful enough that you could just throw your rain around and just make a lot of stuff just happen because you wanted to. But you partner a lot of in a lot of ways. You engage people in a lot of ways. You get your hands dirty in a lot of ways. Why that? And what does that mean to the fabric and the culture that is First Premier? Uh, I'm, I'm often reminded that... Um uh, and you're right, we do play a, a significant role uh, in, in, in the community, and we take that responsibility seriously. But we only play one of the roles. You know, for instance, uh, the United Way campaign. Mm. Okay, so if you add up all of our employee gifts, our corporate gift, our leadership and ownership gifts, you know, we'll contribute 10% of the community's United Way funding mm. for the coming year. That leaves 90% to come from others. Yeah. And so, yes, we may be the largest, but we only fill 10% of that need. Yeah. And so it's important to recognize that, yeah, we play a leadership role, but we are so dependent as a community on everybody playing their part and coming alongside. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, and we're fortunate that the generations that came um, ahead of us in Sioux Falls that collaborative spirit is not new to our community. Uh, it's one that we're we're excited to play an important role in, and uh, as we move forward, want to continue to challenge other organizations that that might just be moving to Sioux Falls um, to get them involved, whether it's the Chamber, United Way, um, Forward Sioux Falls, so that we can say the same thing when we're sitting here 20 years from now, 40 years from now, uh, and I think that's where where our heart is that um, to, to continue to, to not only play um, the small role that, that we play, but to also encourage, challenge, uh, and bring others along uh, so that we, we continue to, to enjoy uh, what we have in this community. Yeah, that's big, and I think that's important. 
you know, as people come to this community, that, that this is established as an expectation, you know, that this is a us thing, mm -hmm. and we all want to better each other. I mean, you guys go as far as providing paid time for employees to be able to go volunteer, which is, which is a really special thing, and giving them an opportunity to go out there in any level in the organization to be able to participate in the community and encouraging it. Um, what has that done? for the organization, really getting folks at every level out there. Because, you know, people see the big things, you know, they'll see the concerts and they'll see the, the big things that you all do. They don't necessarily see the Rake the Town. They don't necessarily see that group, that team-led uh, event at the banquet. They don't necessarily think about that person who's dropping off um, meals to elderly folks um, because they have an organization that provides that opportunity for them to do it. So they don't have to deal with less than to help someone with less than you know Lonnie, i think it goes right back to your your comment is just innately common sense or innate common sense that we would say if we're going to live here we want it to be <laughs> <laughs> the best it can right. be and we we also believe at premier that uh, the only way we'll truly be successful is if our employees are successful and the communities that we serve are successful yeah. And um, and the only way that happens is if we get involved and it, we can get involved with our, our, our financial resources. But more importantly, uh, sometimes it's easiest to give money away. It's harder to yeah. give time away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we need people to serve, but we also need people to lead. And uh, so that's where we challenge our employees. Uh, and we don't ask them to do anything specific. We ask them to follow their heart. Where do you have a passion? Because when you volunteer, you'll be way more effective if you do something that really means something to you. But we do track volunteer hours. We ask our employees to log them. Um, uh, and just proud, like over the last three years, we're well over 100,000 hours of volunteer time. And we do it for a couple of reasons. Number one, we do it because it's important to us. And, yeah. and you know, uh, we ask our people to do it because we want to be able to, to have our employees know that it's important to us. But then secondly, we, we also like to challenge other organizations uh, to, uh, to do the same thing. Yes. Because again, you know, if we do it and you do it, uh, having that multiplying effect is powerful. 100,000 hours. <clears throat> it is so hard to quantify for people the level of impact that that has. You know, when we talk about things, and, and, and it's so tempting for people to get into the politics of things all of the time, and, you know, government this, government that, all of those different type of things. But there's just something different when neighbor helps neighbor. There's something special about that. There's something honest about that. There's something pure about that. There's something healthy about that. When neighbor helps neighbor. And sometimes what is better than having these really big machines to do all these things is to have a neighbor help a neighbor. You know, one of the advantages we have in South Dakota, in Sioux Falls, is that we're a, we're a community that's small enough, we're a state that's small enough where every person can make a difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think by working together, by um, coming alongside others, you get to know people. When you get to know people, I think generally speaking, you inherently trust the people you get mm -hmm. to know. And you have confidence in them. And you know that we're working at this together. Yeah. And if our employees, if one of our employees gives 10, 10 hours um, to a, a cause, you know, they might think, well, what difference does that really make? Well, you know, you multiply that times 2,000 employees each given 10 hours. And then you say, Let's challenge these other companies, organizations to do the same thing. Well, now you have a completely different community than you would otherwise have. Yeah. And a stronger organization. And I agree with everything that Dave said, but the leadership skills and the uh, growth and development that you, those opportunities you get within a, a nonprofit or an organization, um, not, that's why we do it. But a lot of times that comes back um, in, in a better employee that is, mm -hmm. is feeling uh, fulfilled and, and maybe had a chance to chair a campaign or, or do something with within the uh, uh, community that uh, uh, their family's proud of and they're proud of and, and they have some new skills that they can bring back uh, mm -hmm. and help us be a better organization. Doing good is good business. You know, it just makes sense to do. And I love that you're challenging other organizations to do it. And I hope more people take take your lead and really decide to invest in that. And I think for the most part we have, I think for a lot of people in a lot of places, you know, banking is an icky industry for them because they may not have the type of relationships. I will say our community and our community banking situation is top class in the whole world. I say that full throated. The way you all work together, the way you all invest in the community, 
Um, it's it's I I know I know it's not like this in a lot of places, but it really is noteworthy. It really is special. And I don't think we talk about that enough just on this specific industry in our community, in our community banking. It's pretty impressive. Thank you. All right. Well, gentlemen, is there anything that I missed? Anything that you got going on? Anything that's happening that we want to make sure that people know? Um, because obviously, you know, we love what you guys do and we want to make sure that people can engage. What's the word on the street from Premier? I think we, we've covered a lot of ground, Bonnie. Thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to, to join you in this conversation. Um, but we, we're excited to continue to be a, a part of this community and, and uh, whether it's growing Premier one customer at a time or a community, uh, one, one employee or one, uh, one citizen at a time, uh, it's just an exciting time to be in business uh, right now. And, and uh, to Dave's point, we, uh, we're still of a size where uh, you can write your own story. Um, mm -hmm. You can have success in this community. And I think that's what's made it uh, such an attractive community. And we hope uh, what's made Premier a really attractive employer. You know, I, I had the uh, opportunity to move to Sioux Falls in 1989. And uh, so I was 26 years old and been here now for um, 32 years, I believe. And and I just think of the opportunity I've had in my career to experience and be part of the growth of Sioux Falls. Um, you know, it's been amazing. But I was visiting with somebody over lunch the other day, and they said, uh, and this is a, a local attorney in town, and, and um, he was just saying, how excited he would be if he could go back and be 28 years old again yeah, and have the opportunities Whoa. Uh, in our community that will present themselves uh, for that next generation of, of professional or, or, or contributor uh, in our community. So uh, as good as the past has been, I, I honestly do think the future is even brighter. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm super excited about that. It'd be fun to watch it unfold. Absolutely. As am I, it's a special time. A uh, special organization doing great things. We appreciate you so much for all of the things that, that you do for the community, as members of the community, and then as partners as well. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Uh, make sure you all uh, stay connected with us on the website, letsthink3d.com, all of our socials at Think3D Solutions. And then make sure you like and subscribe on the YouTube page so you can get this as soon as it comes out, learning from great individuals like this who want to share information with you. So until next time, thank you for tuning in.